Greek philosopher Protagoras once said, is the measure of all things of what is and what is not. This philosophy provided the foundation for Hellenism, which was devoted to the supremacy of human beings and human accomplishment. Hellenism was based on the belief that human beings are considered to be the ultimate source of the truth and authority in the universe. Since the human being was considered to be the measure of all, uh, human wisdom was also considered to be the most incredible one. The Hellenists tried to build their society on their gods and human creations. In effect, they worshipped themselves. The Hellenistic period lasted from the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC until 31 BC. After his death, uh, all his generals, also known as Diadechi, divided all his conquered territories between each other. After that, there were created three very powerful dynasties. There were residents of Persia and Syria, residents of Greece and Macedonia, and residents of Egypt. The Hellenistic states were ruled absolutely by kings. These kings had a cosmopolitan view of the world and were particularly interested in amassing as many of its riches as they could. They displayed their wealth for all to see, building palaces and commissioning art, sculptures and extravagant jewelry. As we can guess, Hellenism had a massive impact on the world by bringing its ideology and culture to different parts of the globe. Uh, Armenia didn't remain untouched as well. Hellenistic period lasted in Armenia for six centuries and there were two phases. The first phase was the Hellenistic period and the second phase was late Hellenistic period, which, which is basically considered to be the fall of Hellenism in Armenia. Armenia is an ancient country that went through different stages and epochs and before accepting Christianity, the Armenian pagan religion was dominant in the country. One of the ancient traces of Armenian pagan religion and the expression of Armenian Hellenism is the Temple of Karni, being known as built around 77 AD. Karni is dedicated to the ancient Armenian god Mihir, who was the Armenian pagan god of light, purity and the sun. The Greek inscription uncovered by Martyr Sarian in 1945 CE and the research of historians indicate that the Temple of Karni was founded by the Armenian king Tertatas I, who ruled during the second half of the 1st century. From the 3rd BC up to the 4th century, the Temple of Karni was the summer residence of the Armenian kings due to its inaccessibility. According to the cuneiform, Found in the village of Garni, later the temple was conquered by King Argishti in the first half of the 8th century. Centuries later, in 305, when Armenian King Tirdatas I adopted Christianity as a state religion, all the pagan places turned to be destroyed. Therefore, Garni is the only pagan Hellenistic and Greco-Roman structure that survived. Unfortunately, in 1679, an earthquake destroyed the temple and scattered the ruins, columns and stones of the temple into the Azad River and gorge around the Triangular Cape. More than 20 years were required from the archaeologists to put the pieces together. Almost 300 years after the earthquake destroyed the temple, in 1975, the reconstruction was completed. Garni was rebuilt by using the original stones and blank stones that were replacing the missing parts and were easily recognizable. Few people may know, but the temple also played a strategic role because of its location. Garni is built on a high cliff overlooking the range of Gerama Mountains, the Azad River and the Ararat Plain. Due to its high location, it has been an unreachable fortress for the enemies and the strongest fortress for the natives. That is why Turks 
Byzantines, Arabs, all the enemies who have ever invaded Armenia have robbed and ruined the temple and its surrounding territories. The temple functioned as a royal garrison in ancient and medieval times, which later has been surrounded by Roman baths dating back to the 4th century and two 7th century churches. Researchers agree with the idea that there has been an immense defensive wall constructed of monolithic stones dating back most probably to the 1st century after Christ. The importance of Garni has not faded with centuries. In 2011, Garni Historical Cultural Complex was awarded UNESCO Greece Prize after Melina Mercury. At the same time, the cultural complex welcomes over 136,000 visitors each year. Visitors are able to walk up the steep steps, enter the temple, discover the worship center of the ancient times and walk around the columns. The remarkable temple also gives views of the Khosrov State Reserve. Interestingly, a big portion of those visitors are Armenian neo-pagans. The latter caused the site to be their spiritual capital. Each year, the most notable pagan rituals are being held in the temple of Garni. Two thousand years have passed after Theodotus's return from Rome, but he is still alive in the words dedicated to the construction of the temple. The sun god Theodotus, the uncontested king of the great Armenia, built the temple and the impregnable fortress. The Temple of Garni is the only surviving pagan temple in Armenia, which is very similar to the Temple of Athena located in Greece. It enjoys great popularity among tourists and has become one of the most remarkable destinations within the territory of Armenia. The Temple of Garni was built in the place of an Urartian temple. It emulates the latter's dimensions. The temple represents a Greco-Roman peripteros and nine white stairs take to the entrance of the temple, where the sanctum is located. The temple features 24 columns with six columns on the back and six on the front and eight columns on each of the two sides. You will most probably agree that the temple of Garni and the way it harmonizes with the surrounding nature create a sense of magnificence and transmit a mysterious magical mood then what makes this place appear so magical? One of the most fascinating facts about the Temple of Garni is that it was built in accordance with the principles of sacred geometry, meaning that certain geometric shapes, proportions and numbers bear sacred meanings. One represented the universe, two, division, three, the holy trinity, four seasons of the year, pentagram and perfection, divinity and new life, and nine was the most sacred number, three times three, three times the holy trinity. The nine stairs take to the high pedestal and the main entrance. So the overall number of the columns is 24, and let us try to understand the hidden meaning behind that number. 24 consists of two digits, 2 and 4, and the sum of these two digits is 6, which is the representation of perfection. 24 also means 8 times 3, and in sacred geometry it's interpreted as follows, new life multiplied by the Holy Trinity, in other words, the life granted by God. Thus, it can be assumed that the Temple of Garni is the representation of the universe's structure. Subsequently, this is the generator of the magical mood. The Roman baths are found next to Garni Temple. The layout of those represent the layouts that were found across the Roman Empire and the Caucasus. The bath itself is built from Armenian tuff and bricks. What is interesting, uh, the interior it is designed with mosaics that represent mythological scenes that you will see a little bit later. It used to be two buildings, the main one and the outer one, but presently only the excavated one remains. There was a Roman style floor heating, HIPAA custom, which means that the floor was laid in little columns made of bricks. The heat from an oven could be circulating underneath the floor. It is made of natural stones featuring 15 various hues. 
The building represents five room, third century Roman building with steam water room, hot water room, warm water room, cold water bath and the dressing room. Known as the Palace of Coolness, it was designed in a way to offer natural air conditioning. So back in that time, wet drapes were hung over the columns and with the help of blowing wind, the inner part of this bath and building was cooled. But the most interesting part of the bath is the mosaic that is located right in the entrance of the bath and dates back to the third century. The inscriptions on the mosaic are in Greek, while the images, fish and mermaids have oriental facial types. It consists of a small square inside a larger frame, which is decorated with all kinds of aquatic beings, a dolphin, oysters and fish, but also narrates fishermen, casting nets and sailors. In short, everything that people in Armenia never witnessed in real life. Still, the representations are quite realistic, suggesting that the makers of the mosaic were from a Mediterranean sea. We can read works like Seaside, Beauty, Depth, Serenity, and can see aquatic mythological figures like Thesis, Ares, Pothos. The inner square is what really makes this interesting. Here we see Thalassa and Oceanus, two deities of the sea and inscription. Without pay, we have been working. Although we can understand these Greek words, we do not understand their meaning. It is possible that the makers of a mosaic had a quiet revenge on an employer who didn't pay as promised. Alternatively, the mosaic makers have documented that their work was done in love and passion for someone they appreciated very much.